This is my tribute to you. Throughout your life, you let the light of God glisten through you. You are the pride and joy of South Carolina. And so I'm here, here with Nabate Isles, Grammy Award winning trumpet player, modern musician who's well rehearsed and playing melodious jams like um, jazz, neo soul, and hip hop. So you're just like a phenomenal uh, man, like so creative. And you've played with notable bands like Jill Scott, Fantasia. You even played for Barack Obama on his way out of the White House. Yes. How huge was that? Oh, that was a great moment. It was a lot, a lot was going on in my life at that time. That was 20, uh, February, 2016. Um, and a lot was going on in my life, um, you know, like a, a lot of stress and everything. And, uh, and, and it was great to do that event that really opened things up. It was with Christian McBride and his big man. And um, we got to back up. It was a Ray Charles tribute. So we got to back up so many uh, luminous artists, you know, um, you know, like Usher and Yolanda Adams and uh, Sam and Dave. I'm sorry, Sam, just Sam Moore from Sam and Dave and Leon Bridges, Brittany Howard, et cetera, et cetera. And, and it, was, it was a beautiful moment. It was a beautiful oh, feeling. Beautiful yeah. tribute. We have Niles, the Magnificent. Okay, I'm going to say the Magnificent because you're like a poet, like spoken word. The words cannot express how talented you actually are when it comes to hip hop. Thank so that. that's one of the things I really appreciate about you when wanna... you have that title, Renaissance Man. It just does not do you justice because you're so talented and very passionate about your work. And you too have a roster where you've opened up the stage for acts like Slick Rick, like Legends, Camp Low, uh, Rock, what, who is that? Rock Him? Rock Him. Yeah. Rock Him. Yes. So. You just released the album last year. How is that doing? Album's doing great. It's been a, a lot of lot of love. You know, mm -hmm. the one thing about it is people throughout the years who have supported you when you release a project, it just accumulates with them supporting and buying it. And it's been beautiful. I travel back home to uh, my hometown, Lansing, Michigan to have a release party there. And uh, it was just so much love because I don't get to go home a lot. Mm. And um, so to bring that type of inspiration there was was amazing. And I teach as well. I teach a program called Hip Hop History in the Arts. So creating an album um, is a great way to show the youth and the young artists uh, how to create a project, do it successfully, and, uh, and, and and get it out there. So, yeah, it's been great. So with that, um, with the youth, is that how's that doing? It's going very, very well. It's funny because when I, when I lived in New York and I was on my uh, artist thing and I was the only avenue, I never imagined I'd be an educator. Mm -hmm. I graduated from Michigan State University, too, so education's always been my nucleus, but I was just like hit the ground running as, as an artist, just period, you know? But as time went on, um, you know, to become a, a diversified person with my approach became like the main agenda and teaching became just one of, one of the main points and just lucratively, um, it, it brings in uh, a lot as well. So just kept on going and uh, my program, Hip Hop History in the Arts, been teaching it for like 11 years and, um, and I only have a BA in communications, but I was able to create a curriculum and um, by the grace of God, it's been able to flourish, so. Wow, congratulations. That's, Thank we're you. gonna congratulate you for that one thing, but y'all have you. congratulations on a whole other spectrum. Y'all are like, let's talk about this Grammy consideration. Yes, uh, yes, um, on, on pretty much winning the first round, which has been great for uh, consideration for four categories, uh, best rap performance, best rap song, uh, best uh, record of the year and song of the year. So, so we're under consideration that the Grammy nominations come out on November 23rd. Uh, so right, they make sure to put it out right before wow. Thanksgiving. So it'll be Tuesday, it's next, uh, a week from this, from, from, uh, yeah, so eight days from, from this, from recording in the interview, uh, we should, so in eight days, we'll find out, you know, whether wow. we, got, we, we did a great campaign, Niles, myself, and Beth Griffin Manley really, um, 
really like got it out there and, and it was special, you know, it's for Chadwick Bozeman. We both, all three of us had so much love and admiration for him. And, um, and, you know, definitely now to tell you like uh, how we, we linked, you know, we ended up linking the, you know, we knew each other for a long time, but he uh, did a freestyle about Chadwick Bozeman on IG and I called him. We, we always wanted to do a track together. So I called him and said, let's do something on, on, on Chadwick Bozeman, you know, let's do it. You know, he, he meant a lot to us and, and the rest is history and we were able to put the track together. So wow, and this this track came out last year. So the consideration is a year later. How does that happen? I think that uh, just how how art always stays alive when it's mm -hmm. pure, when it's from the heart, you know. So with this being a year later, and for it to be considered, I think that that is a testament to um, the the hard work that uh, me and Abate uh, put into the record. It's, it's so much work behind the scenes that we put into it. Um, and along with that, I think that it's just stars aligning. I mean, Nabate's people are from where um, Chadwick Bozeman is from, mm. you know, and I didn't know that. And then along with that, my people went to a church called Mount Lebanon Baptist Church in, in Brooklyn, New York, with mm -hmm. Chadwick Bozeman for like eight years before wow. he blew up. And uh, my um, cousin's husband, when he first moved to New York, before he got married, he stayed with Chadwick Bozeman while he was getting everything situated. And uh, so we both found that out amongst making the record. Um, so it's so many great connections to the song. So for it to become a Grammy nominated record, that's just like the ultimate, um, just the, the ultimate right there. How, how all those things accumulates to that, so yeah. Are you both in independent artists? How does that work? Uh, with your with you being independent, if that's what you are, uh, and then being considered for the Grammy, like, are you a group? Like, how does that work? <laughs> yeah, well, well, we we were we we're a group for for that song for sure. Okay. You know, because uh, we it was a concept we both created and everything like that. You know, we both like created when it came to Chadwick Boseman. Uh, so we're we're partners on this for sure. And um, and the thing is that. Uh, so, but for the Grammy nominations, yeah, the, the, the cycle is, I believe, uh, like October of 2020 through September 29th of 2021. Mm -hmm. So that's the cycle for the, so I'm glad the song was, we released it on November 27th, right. which is the weekend of, of Chadwick Boseman's birthday, the first birthday that he wow. was, that he is not on this earth, unfortunately, you know, in it physically but in spirit he's still around for sure <laughs> um so we released it that weekend um but yeah but but with this song um yeah it was just that partnership and then we applied it to the grammys and and, and made it so we, we're like yeah we totally independently did this on our own built to build this up and everything and and it's great you know yeah. being four categories it's phenomenal <laughs> like you don't usually <laughs> get that that's amazing so when you guys linked up what what was the thing that you took into consideration to say hey this is the person I want on the instruments this is the person I want singing the hooks and mm. you know I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this thing we gonna we gonna make it blow up so what did you take into consideration to bring this song to life so so this is this is how it came about so uh Chadwick Bozeman's always been uh like a role model of mine, you know, with my name being Chadwick, you know, his name being Chadwick for starters, but just his whole legacy, you know, has always been special. So when he passed, it was devastating to me. And I just put out a, a freestyle about it, you know, just all from the heart. And, and a lot of people shared it. They showed props to it and it was love, you know. And then uh, Nabate hit me up, like, fam, we got to like take this song and just take it and take it to another level, like make an actual song out of it. So Nabate let me hear this beat over the phone. It was so cold. Right when I heard the beat, I was like, it's on, it's on. So Nabate made the beat. I, I wrote, you know, wrote my, uh, my my other verse. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna turn this verse into an actual song now, you know? And then um, Beth Griffith Manley, who's out of Detroit, Michigan, um, she made it real far on the voice. She's done background singing for Anita Baker, Aretha Franklin, Kim, stunt double for Whitney Houston in the movie Sparkle. She's like Detroit R&B royalty. And I'm from Michigan. 
So I hosted a release party for her for a song called You Already Won virtually, mm -hmm. right? And then we built a relationship. So when we were looking for a singer, I was like, Nabate, bro, I got someone, man. So I hit up Beth and she just owned that chorus, you know, and um, the rest is history. And so to work with Nabate and to work with Beth, you know, two people who's prestigious within the music industry with very rich and official resumes, it, it's just, it's a great thing. It's perfect, you know, and she's in Detroit. I'm here in Minneapolis. He's in New York. So the different regions were able right. to uh, radiate it out to, you know, and it's, it's amazing. It's been a great run, great ride so far, yeah. And, and to add to that, that. What was and, that? Add to, and add to that, why I was really gun ho to work with um, with Niles on this song, because like with, like I said, my connections to Chadwick Boseman, my cousin, my older cousin, who's, who's like, my mother's age. So she's like, she was like my mother kind of when I would go to South Carolina, I stayed with her, you know, and, and, and she knew Chadwick when he was a child um, in the Anderson since he was a child. And this great moment, and I, I'm glad I had the honor to meet him was at the Blue Note. Um, it was a show at the Blue Note. And he came, he went upstairs to, to go backstage. And, and I said, I always said, if I ever meet him, I'll mention my cousin, Barbara Mack. And I said, you know, my cousin, Anson in South Carolina, he was like, who's that? Bar I said, Barbara Mack. And he was like, <laughs> like, like just it's small world. How you run into something, you know, like that. So, and, and we took a picture and we talked and everything. Great brother. And that's why I was really gun ho about it. Cause I was like, I had that experience with him. The honor of that experience, I said, okay, we we, we got to do we got to do it, and and we that helped us put our our heart and soul into it. Yeah. yeah. So you both, we you're familiar with him. You've all had your experiences. Mm -hmm. How did it empower you? Like going back once the song was finalized to tap into your creativity more once you knew what you knew about him after researching him further. Mm. Wow. You oh no, you go right in. That's, uh, that's a that was a heavy one. I'm like, you know. Um I mean, if you look at who the brother depicted within mm -hmm. his career, you know, uh, Jackie Robinson, Thurgood Marshall, um, James Brown, um, then you look at Black Panther. Like, remember when Black Panther first came out? Mm -hmm. I have never in my life seen this type of impact from a movie, especially, uh, you know, on, on our people globally, you know, how everybody was dressed in African garb. It just brought so much just essence and joy and, and, and just, just unification, you know, and amongst us, everybody else too. It was just this, this euphoric energy for like two weeks straight, yeah. you know, in the world, like the whole world stopped. And then when you see how he carried himself, like I said, um, what did I say? The, the, the lyrics, I said, the, the, the man who stacked zeros, but then I said a black superhero, but stayed humble, you know? Like he was the man, but he was so humble. And to me, that's the epitome of how you should be right. when, you, when you have that type of influence, when you have that type of uh, power. You know, and my favorite part of the movie, and I think it, what his his um, main agenda in general was, if you look at the end, this is after the movie's over, he does a speech about how we need to unify and how we need to come together and how we need to leave legacy for the next generations. And he's talking to people of all different like languages from different countries, cultures, and that's after the movie was over. And so, yeah, Chadwick, I can't even speak like I could go on forever about how much this brother has inspired me. Yeah. Yes. And and what inspired me about him is um how he approached his art. Mm -hmm. uh, he made sure like he 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 was so diverse as a thespian, you know. And but also too, he did a lot of things when he was a kid. He played drums, you know, mm -hmm. African drumming, all the way leading to when he was an adult. Um, I saw a beautiful thing he did for Stan Lee. Um, which Stan Lee is the creator of all the Marvel series and everything, uh, the comic. And when he passed away, he played a drum, he played on djembe, 
you know, played something on Jimbe for Stanley, you know, and, and he was a basketball player in high school, you know, um, he did everything with the Howard University and, and like really, and what Felicia Shroud was saying was that he really left no stone unturned when it came to his craft. He made mm-hmm. sure he could do everything technically and everything like from the standpoint of from the heart and, and, and he put his all to it. And his film career is just incredible. Like, like, uh, like now I said, mentioned Thurgood Marshall, you know, Marshall and, and uh, Get On Up, the James Brown film and, and 42, Jackie Robinson. Um, and then even the Express, when I saw the Express, you know, with my good friend, Rob Brown, the great actor um, and everything, Rob, I was talking to Rob about Chadwick and that was Chadwick's film debut in a major film. Mm-hmm. And you can see Chadwick's presence there already, you know, like just in a few scenes, Chadwick played Floyd Little, you know, like the great Syracuse running back, you know, um, so, you know, it's just great, like with Chadwick Boseman, his 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 skill set and and how he approached his art, and then of course with Ma Rainey, Black Bottom, you know, the rest is history. That performance, you know, and he went to his he went to his roots of the theater in that. The rest is history, you know, and uh, yeah, that's that's really deep. And just talking with him, like he just a normal cat, you know, like the humility that that Nas said that he it was it was it was it was exhibited fully. Now, I'm glad you said, and Niles, you said something about legacy, because that was one of my questions. Did this project make you, or just what, like I said, what you know about him now? Like, you've made a whole song just talking about all the wonderful things that he's incorporated in a lifetime through a song. Um, and then we think about the legacy. This is his legacy. This is your legacy. So did it make you really kind of sit and think about things like that once the song was finished? Yes, it, it totally did. Um, like I always say, I always want to be on the, the right side of history, not the wrong right. side of history, you know? So wh- whatever I create uh, with, with the legacy that, that, that I am um, walking in, um, I'd always wanted to have to do with what's bringing light, what's bringing energy, what's bringing growth, what's bringing unification, what's bringing reflection. And um, so creating this song uh, about Chadwick Boseman um, with, with Nabate and with Beth, that's something that I can always say that um, I, I, I did. And wherever it goes, I accept that. So for it to become a Grammy nominated song, we didn't even think of that when we made it. It was just to give props, you know, and love to Chadwick's legacy. And then along with that, we was able to meet Chadwick's brother, Derek Bozeman, Pastor Derek Bozeman. Um, and we were able to let him hear the song in a Zoom meeting. Um, and he's given us his support. So that right there, I can't even explain the, um, the joy and the importance of having that connection to the whole campaign is just so everything it's manifesting into is um something that's very special and, mm-hmm. and um that connects with Chadwick's legacy and our own okay. and you Nabate? well i mean um what really brought like it was so funny the african drums that that i was able to put i have my shout out to my man alakoy pete uh out in los angeles um out, out in, in from inglewood you know down in and he one of the great percussionists and a very talented mc by the name of mike holden he goes by that name but but he like you know i i i said to him hey can you set up this i sent him like a pattern a djembe pattern and he put some djembe put chakra uh congas and everything and it's so funny then when we spoke to Derek Bozeman when we spoke to him he said yeah Chad would love African drums you know he had a whole he had djembe and congas in, in, in a studio a music room in his apartment you know um so that right there was like wow that was organic like wow I put that there because I was you know, think about the you know whole Black Panther reference and everything like that. But it turned out that 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 Chadwick Boseman percussionist himself, you know. Um, so that really was great. And then just having, you know, having to write those elements. I wanted a noble, regal type of track to to put like to to bring like very very um you know like I wanted to make it like like a Marnock. You know, he was a kid. Um, so wanted to bring, bring that aspect with the keys as well, with the piano as well. And yeah, so it was, it was really, 
really uh, great, you know, with that sonically. And I wanted to play the trumpet with a harmon, um, excuse me, a harmon mute, then mm -hmm. with uh, a plunger, like a mix that sound like a la Levy in, in, uh, in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, being a cornet player. And it really kind of tripped me out. That was his final role. Right. Uh, his final role was a, a, a cornetist, which is trumpet, very similar interest. So that really, that bugged me out. You know, so, so yeah, I wanted the track to have that, that regalness, that organic African Afrocentric vibe, as well as like with the trumpet playing, be like a sound like that thirties, you know, thirties, that twenties, thirties vibe of Chicago, you know, where the, where the film took place. It's definitely a, a unique vibe. Uh, it, de it takes off like bluesy and jazz like, but then it go, it, it's an upbeat tempo. So it's very mm -hmm. different, you know, when you're paying pay homage and it's mm -hmm. not a sad story. It's a very upbeat and uplifting story. So kudos for that. And then my, my next question is how, okay, so you're not in the same locations like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How did this come together? How were you able to do studio sessions, notes? Like, what was that experience like? Oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, well, modern technology, the beauty of modern technology. <laughs> it being the pandemic is the midst of the pandemic, no vaccines yet um, and everything. So, uh, so what, we, you know, I, I would spend, uh, send uh, Niles the track and everything, have it laid out, um, and then um, and then he he would give his verse, mm -hmm. and then I would match like all the stems of his vocals, and and then Beth Griffin Manley, we sent her the track with Niles' vocals, and she was able to get in the studio and be able to record that, you know, record her vocals. So that's the beauty of modern technology. It's kind of a gift and a curse. It's a gift. To, so you can work with anyone around the world right. through email and be able to send and people could record in their own way. But it's a curse though, because still it's nothing like being in the studio together. You know what I mean? And I wish we, that would have been even woo, but, but, you know, but we made it happen with how it happened with being able to transfer that, that energy of, of, you know, each sending us each other's uh, work and everything. And then we just synced it up. And yeah, and then Casey, if you want to talk about Casey Golden, like Good Look Studios, the Minnesota uh, Niles, like that's, you know, how he was able to put it all together. <laughs> yeah, so Casey Golden is uh, the main engineer who I work with. He's the one who mixed and mastered my album. And anything I bring to him, he just, just glistens it. He like, it's very important to have uh, a great engineer who pays close attention to detail um, with whatever you bring to them. I always say a, a great engineer is like a great barber. That's you know, you can just sit in the barber chair and you, you know you're good, <laughs> you know your edge is gonna be right, nothing gonna be pushed back, it's gonna be right. sharp. That's Casey Golden. He's like the best barber here, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, sending it to him, and he he buttered it up very well. Um, along with that, uh, the graphic design, um, Jeremy Egger gave us just an incredible cover art that was reminiscent almost of a Black Pantherish, you know, Africana, futuristic element. And um, so yeah, everything came together very, very well. Yeah. Do you guys have a um, visuals for that? I know the song is out, but I'm not sure about the, the actual visuals. Yeah, we, we do. Um, Jeremy oh, hooked up two versions. The first one was with uh, Chadwick Boseman's image, mm -hmm. but we couldn't release that because mm -hmm. it was from a picture that, you know, copyright. like, yeah, copyright. So, so, so Jeremy ended up making a new cover for the release of the record, but we still put the picture out to like promote it and everything like that with Chadwick. So yeah. Okay. And we made a, um, like a collage video mm -hmm. of the, the record where it shows Chadwick at different points of his career from oh. the time that he spoke at Howard University's uh, graduation to the different movies he was in to even pictures of him with, um, you know, uh, kids with special needs because he was a philanthropist in that way as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, we did that just to show our appreciation and to have a visual of the song. So, yeah. So with this project, um, you will find out in eight days when you, who, who submitted to the grant? Like, was that an easy process? 
Yeah, like it just being, you know, um, being a Grammy member, which is, is great. Like we just put it, we, Nas and I got together, filled out the forms together and stuff, did it through a Zoom, you know, like and, and everything and filled out the forms. And yeah, that's the process. Like you just, uh, you apply for it um, and then you put in everything and then, then they evaluate, they listen and then they ask for like all of the links to the track. So then people can listen when they're voting, they can listen to all the tracks. They have a Spotify link, Apple music link, et cetera, et cetera. So they can listen to it. So yeah, so we applied and put it in and, and uh, you know, fingers crossed, we were one of the five nominees. Just, <laughs> you know, and then the Sarah, I think the Grammys, um, the Grammys, I believe is in late January or, or mid February. I'm not sure when the actual awards are, mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, so hopefully we can, be able to be one of the nominees, you know, for that. <laughs> Hope so. Will it be embargo? Will you be able to announce it or you have to sit on it until until that when it's publicized? Oh, the nomination? Yeah. Oh, the no, no, they they let they put that out. Oh, they okay. put out all the nominations <laughs> out that on November 23rd is public, public knowledge. They put everything billboard and Grammy.com and everything. They'll have all the nominations, yep, for every category. Yeah. Okay, so my next question is da, 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 drum, uh, drum roll, tongue tied. Okay, so are you guys working on new projects? What is going on now? Oh, okay. So, um, uh, I'm working on a new album. Mm -hmm. Number one, uh, number two, uh, music videos coming out uh, by uh, another Grammy Award winning musician by the name of Ben Williams. Um, Faces. It's a song on his project called Take It From Me that uh, I am featured on. And on top of that, um, one of the top trumpeters in the world, uh, Grammy winner too, uh, Keon Harold, um, yeah. hopped on the video version of the song. He just felt the energy and the message of the song that much that he recorded his part, mm -hmm. sent it in. So it's me on a track with Ben Williams and Keon Harold. And it's called Take It From Me. It'll be coming out uh, this this week. Actually. Wow. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Like, I, feel, I'm, I feel like you got a thing for trumpets. Like, trumpet must be your favorite instrument. Uh, <laughs> what do you have going on, Nabate? Yeah, I'm coming out uh, with a new... I'm recording in January my my second record. Um, uh, and it's going to be with Rope Adult Records, which is a great label. Um, mm. So it's going to be with them. They're an indie label, but they're very, very powerful from the standpoint a lot of great artists are with them and stuff so i'm um, recording in january uh for that which is going to be um just amazing you know i can't wait uh, gonna have some great people on it um and everything and uh yeah so i'm doing that in january and then just you know uh have some gigs coming on christian mcbride just did one at nj pack in new jersey about to do something at the kenny center with him february 4th for black history month on this piece called the movement revisited and uh yeah just just get it still composing, doing some some projects and everything. But this this second record is gonna it's gonna be different, a different thing, you know, to say the least. <laughs> it's gonna be Creativity different. at its best, at its finest. Mm -hmm. So for for uh Chadwick Bozeman, that that beautiful tribute, where can our viewers uh download that, follow you? Like, do does the public have a say so? Can they what what can they do to get the get the word out about it? Oh, nice if you want yeah yeah so um it is out on Bandcamp um on my Bandcamp Nabate's Bandcamp if you purchase it through that um the funds go right to us along with that uh, a portion of the proceeds goes to the Chadwick Boseman Charitable Fund for the Arts um mm -hmm. which which is contributing to uh, his, his legacy as well. So if you contribute to it, you're contributing to that. Uh, along with that, it's out on all digital music platforms uh, globally from Spotify to Amazon. You can find it anywhere and everywhere. Just everybody out there, um, you know, who love Chadwick, who just love un unification and, and who represent what Chadwick represented, uh, this record embodies all of those things because the the core of it, the nucleus of it came from light. It came from love. It just came from 100% organic creativity. Um, so if you support it, you're supporting that cause as well. And that's what Chadwick ultimately embodied. So 
Yeah. It's a beautiful piece. I mean, I, you. you could not have told me you did not do it in a studio. So that is something you let out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that pandemic, with, yeah, that's real. That pandemic, yeah, we, you know, you know, everything was shut down, unfortunately, right. in 2020, right after that mid March. Mm -hmm. Right. Unfortunately, yeah. And I recorded yeah. it from my home, you know. I, that's when I first bought a home studio. So um that let me know you can record great music out of your place, you know. That's right. That's right. Cause you yeah. can't open your own home, you know. Oh, I'm sitting down, you know. I'm just amazed. All the cues are like everything is as it would have been if you've done a million runs to get it perfected, and it's perfected and you're all online. So that's crazy to me. And it just speaks to yeah, y'all's level of creativity, for sure. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. So social media handles so the viewers can follow you. Yeah, I'm at nsi.universal. N is in no, S is in Sam, I is in indigo, nsi.universal on Instagram. I'm at nabate, N-A-B-A-T-E-I-S-L-E-S-S-M-T-A -S 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 on Twitter. Uh, and Nabate Isles Trumpet um, on Facebook, and I'm NabateIsles.com, N-A-B-A-T-E-I-S-L-E-S.com. That's my website. Woo -woo. And on Instagram, I am at Niles Got You. That is at N-I-L-E-S-G-O-T-Y-O-U. And my website is www.TheAvantGardeIs.com. That's T-H-E-A-V-A-N-T-G-A-R-D-E-I-S.com. This is my tribute to you. Throughout your life, you let the light of God glisten through you. You are the pride and joy of South Carolina truth. And that commencement speech that she spoke at Howard U. We'll be taught in school books for eternity. Unlocking mind, you are the turning key. Amongst the chemotherapies and the surgeries, you still became a universal legend. A supernova surgery energy you possessed to play Jackie Robinson, Thurgood Marshall, and James Brown. Brother, you was blessed and keen to Jala. Black Panther was our everything. It revolutionized with art and ways I've never seen. The icon who stacked zeros But stayed humble Perfect role model Real life black superhero I'm honored to have The same first name as you Job well done You completed what you came to do I see you.